Hey guys, Tim Little here with Tactical Bassin. By now, most of you guys have seen the epic story of Matt's 17 pounder. What a true testament to, uh, to the plan. And when things are meant to be, they're meant to be, and uh, there's no stopping them. So, um, truly an amazing story. If you guys haven't seen the video of him explaining his, his 17 pounder, um, I'll put a link in the description. But uh, today I want to talk to you guys about my personal best. You know, Matt and I, we we're getting a lot of questions and messages about, um, you know, our biggest fish. So Matt got to, got to share his, his unique story. And today I'm going to share mine. Um, no, I didn't hand line her in. Uh, she was truly a giant. She was 15 pounds. Um, she was 28 and a half inches long by 24 inches around. And, uh, Crazy thing about that fish was she was post-spawn. I caught her back in 2009 and uh, early spring, and she had nothing in her gut. Um, you know, who knows? She couple throw a couple trout in her, and maybe she'd be pushing that 17-pound mark, that 27-inch girth that Matt's, Matt's fish had. But uh, so my unique story, um, it started with uh, I'd had shoulder surgery. I had wrecked on my, my dirt bike and I had destroyed my shoulder and, and, uh, I actually had shoulder surgery three weeks before I caught her. And, uh, I was really itching to go fish and get out of the house. Um, you know, I, <laughs> the ironic thing was I wasn't supposed to lift anything over 10 pounds. Little did I know that I was going to catch two that day that were, that were as big as that or bigger. Um, but getting into the story, you know, I had, I grown up a fisher, a finesse fisherman, you know, spinning rods, jigs, that sort of thing. And, uh, I knew, I knew about swim baits. I, I knew the potential, you know, I had seen some stories, I'd heard some stories and, uh, I really wanted to get into the, to get into, to expanding, you know, my tackle box, expanding my, my knowledge. And I wanted to get into that big bait game. You know, I knew what a Huddleston was. I knew what a triple trout was. I knew, you know, what a BBZ was. And so, my good friend, uh, Wes Stevener, the guy that got me into bass fishing, um, I talked him into going to a lake, uh, about an hour away from my house. You know, for those who don't know, I grew up in, in Grass Valley, California. We have a lot of great local lakes, you know, um, only two hours from here now to Clear Lake. You have the Delta, obviously Bullard's Bar, the biggest spots on the planet, um, and some other great fisheries all within a few hours. And, uh, there was a specific lake, um, it's a, uh, it's, it's a decent size reservoir, but they have their own trout stocking, um, program. So I knew that I had a potential of sticking a giant there. And, uh, I went out and obviously I was rehabbing from my shoulder surgery. So I had plenty of time to shop on tackle warehouse, but I went out and bought three Huddleston swim baits exact same bait that Matt stuck his, his, his giant on. This is an ROF five. Uh, I actually had purchased three of them. You know, I was a college student and, uh, didn't have a lot of money, but, but, uh, bought three of them. I got two ROF fives and one ROF 12. And that has to do with how fast they sink. Um, so I talked to my buddy Wes into driving out to the lake. Here I am with my, with my freshly cut open shoulder and, and, uh, my plan was to go throw a swim bait. I wanted, I'd never thrown a Huddleston before and, uh, never been to the lake before actually. So, uh, as, as ironic as that is, you know, you show up to a lake you've never been to before, throwing a bait you never throw, thrown before and you stick an absolute giant. But, uh, let's go through that day. So we, it's kind of an overcast day. It's not too stormy. It's you know, a little windy or whatever. And, we get out on the lake and, and I start throwing this Huddleston. Now I didn't know anything about what I was doing. Um, I was throwing out a seven and a half foot medium power rod. It's kind of, it's kind of funny how, how similar my story is with, with Matt's, um, seven and a half medium power rod. I remember I was throwing 17 pound mono, uh, big game. And, um, I had taken, I had taken the, the, 
these these baits don't come with hooks on them. So I take a split ring and put it right here, and I put a little one knot owner hook, and uh, that was my bait. Yeah, the ROF 12 has a has a hook on the top, but uh, so my plan was just to chuck and wine, chuck and wine. I didn't know what I was doing, and uh, I was just hoping for a bite. And right off the bat, Wes was throwing. He bought a swim bait. He had bought like a Sabil or some some hard swim bait, and he caught like a five pound rainbow trout. And uh, it's pretty funny. But uh, fast forward throughout the day, uh, I got two of my baits hung up, <clears throat> snagged, and broke off. And uh, I didn't know it, but there was some some floating brush piles and stuff that that those guys put in the lake to help manage the the fishery. But uh, I was really bummed, you know, a couple hours into it, Wes is up front shaking a worm and that's not why I wanted to be there. I was irritated that I had, I had lost already 60 plus something dollars of swim baits in two casts. And, uh, I remember at one point I'm sitting down on the boat and I'm, I'm just kind of biting my tongue. I'm getting frustrated and, uh, I wasn't even fishing. Wes is kind of fishing along and uh, we come out to a main lake point and uh, picked up the swim bait rod. Bombed it out across this point and uh, just started reeling. At this point, I'm down to the last ROF5 I had and uh, first cast across the point. I never got bit, you know, I'd always expected with a, a, a big eight inch bait like that and, and a giant bass eating it, that it would rip your arm off. But uh, I didn't even feel, it just it just felt different. It almost felt like I had a wet rag on the end of the rod. It, it was almost like a, a finesse bite when they pick it up. Um, and I just happened to reel down and swing and I'm like, oh, I have one. And uh, I didn't have my drag set strong enough. You know, all of a sudden this fish is like, zzz, you know, and, and we're going all over the place. The water's murky. I couldn't see it. So I'm on the trolling motor chasing around. Fish comes around the side. I probably played this fish obviously way too long, probably like a minute or two. And, uh, Wes bends over the side of the boat and he lifts up this giant fish and puts it in the boat. And I'm like, there it is. There's my 10 pounder. You know, that was my whole goal. And, uh, we put it on his scale and it weighed. 9.8 and at that point that, that was my pb that was my personal best bass that was my biggest bass that was why i went there and i was two tenths away from hitting my double digit and uh, as excited as i was i was bummed i finally get a bite um, of a giant and uh it wasn't 10 pounds um so at this lake they actually have like a a store by the launch ramp where you, they take your picture or whatever, and they have a scale. And I'll get, I'll, I'll talk to you more about the scale in a few. But, uh, dude, I didn't even make another cast. I don't, I don't know why. And it's funny hearing Matt's story. I don't know if it's you're that screwed up in the head or you're that excited. I don't, I don't know why. But I never even made another cast. And uh, we literally put the fish in the live well, drive to the ramp, put the boat on the trailer, drive to the store. And the store's right next to the right next to the launch ramp. And I uh, bring out the fish. They weigh it. Um, the scale they have. Uh, you remember, some of the younger kids probably won't remember this, but uh, I guess I'm dating myself. Um, grocery stores in the, in, the, in the produce section, they had like the metal baskets and the little wheel that spun around. Well, that's what it was. So I put this fish up there, and it's just under 10 pounds. They take a few pictures and uh, we go down and we let the fish go. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't know what we were thinking. I don't know what I was thinking, but we didn't even go back to that spot. We started fishing by the ramp and uh, started making our way to the dam and everything. And at some point, um, we decided to go back, go back. Um, light bulb must have went off, you know, duh, you guys are stupid or something, but to go back and make that cast again. Now the wind's really picked up and we get across the lake, get over to that point, And I remember the wind was blowing, we're getting like two and three foot rollers now. And the wind was blowing so hard that Wes had to hold the front of the boat with the trolling motor while I bombed a cast out the back. 
And uh, there, again, man, I bombed that Huddleston out the back, reel along just like before, and I about got my arm ripped off. I set into that thing and it was a war. I thought I'd hooked like a giant spot because that fish owned me. I fought that fish for probably three minutes chasing around with the troll motor. I never got to see it. I, that fish got so close to the boat so many times and zzz, you know, it'd take off and man, I was stupid. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, get the fish played out and I remember it like it was yesterday, man. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Wes uh, leans over the side of the boat and he takes both hands and he grabs this fish and he holds it up and he goes, here's your fish over 10 pounds. And I looked at the size of that thing and I went, oh my gosh. She was massive, man. I, my, my jaw dropped. Um, honest to God, she barely fit in that Ranger live well. And, uh, man, I'm not exaggerating when I say that she, she looked like she could eat that nine, eight that I caught earlier. So here it is in two casts. I catch my two personal best. I catch a 9.8, just shy of 10 pounds. And we put this fish on the scale and it maxes out his scale at 15 pounds. Scale only went to 15 pounds. So we leave the spot again, again, man, I don't know, looking back, I probably could have made another five or six casts across that point and had a humongous, a giant limit, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was so screwed up in the head to see the size of these fish, man, I'm looking at these eyeballs that are like silver dollars, you know, and it's just, it's, it's hard, it's hard to, those fish are, are freaks, man, they, they don't look normal. Anyway, so we... We do the whole process over again. We drive across the lake, put the, the, the boat on the trailer, and we drive right up to the little store right there. And we pull this fish out of the live well, and there's people at the store, and, they're, and their jaws dropped, and put this thing on this basket scale. This fish is 28 and a half inches long. You know, this scale's only, or this, this metal basket's only this big. And I remember her tail's hanging off this side, or her gigantic head's hanging off this side. And that thing is just spinning. It comes all the way around to 15 pounds, and it stayed right, right around 15. So that's my PB. That's a 15. I'm going to call her a 15. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what she weighed. I didn't have a certified scale. I didn't have a, a scale that was even a Rapala scale or anything that would, would weigh something that big. But, uh, the, the people from the, the, the store came out and took pictures. They're like, that might be the lake record. And, uh, and we, we took some pictures. I snapped, uh, Wes took one, one or two pictures on a flip cell phone. Um, those are the pictures that you saw of her that was taken with a flip cell phone. And, uh, I'm holding her, I'm holding her, am I holding her like this, I think? My arm is, my shoulder's shot. I don't even know how I was casting a swim bait. I don't know how I, I'm holding her, but I'm only supposed to hold 10 pounds. That was the max. I never, in my wildest dreams, I thought I was going to hold a, a, a teener. Um, so I'm holding her like this. You can see, man, just the, just the, the size of her. She's a, she's a freak. Uh, super healthy. We went back right down to the launch ramp put her in the water and uh, she took off like a rocket. So hopefully that fish is still living, you know, alive today. And uh, I mean, she had the potential. She's, she's giant. So goes to show guys, you know, we, we do all these videos and, uh, and everything here, here, this rookie is, I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff the wrong way, the wrong, I mean, everything wrong. And uh, just like Matt's fish, everything wrong and something went right. And, and, uh, man, to you beginners out there that want to get into the swim bait game, hopefully that's, hopefully that's inspirational to you guys. I mean, I was clueless. I had never thrown a Huddleston before. I didn't have the proper gear. I'd never been to a lake before. And to go out there and have two fish for almost 25 pounds, um, it can happen to any of us. So that is my PB story. Um, again, I didn't hand line it in, but it was just, a. Uh, 
a rookie kid trying to get into swim baiting. And uh, little did I know that day that that was going to be the most epic day um, on, a, on a Huddleston. So shortly after I caught that fish, I was actually in a tackle shop and I was in the, the swim bait section looking at different baits and stuff. And obviously I was intrigued with swim baits now. Um, and this guy was ended up walking in the same aisle and he's looking at baits and I'm looking at baits and, and, uh, he just looked like a long haired hippie dude and, uh, ended up talking to him. And obviously you can figure out who that was. It was Matt. And, uh, he was actually there to do a swim bait fishing seminar. And, uh, I stayed and I watched the seminar and was blown away by, but by, by the details and, and, uh, the stuff he talked about, and uh, we actually hit it off. We became super close, super close friends, and uh, it's led to to uh, me joining Tactical. And uh, it's amazing how this how a fish can and can impact lives. And and uh, you know, Matt talked about it in his video, the friends he's met and the relationships he's built because of because of it. Same goes for me. And it's crazy how much of this thing we call fishing, how much it actually impacts our lives and. Uh, it's been awesome. So it's, it's been a great to be a part of tactical and to be able to share, you know, I don't know everything, but what I do know, I'll, I'll share with you and, and same with Matt. And, uh, the whole, the whole part of it is to get people to enjoy the outdoors, enjoy fishing, to give back to, uh, something that helped save me. Um, it's, it's been a, a real bl blessing to, uh, to be a part of it. So that is my PB story, guys. So remember, stay dedicated. Don't be afraid to try new things and uh, always learn. Anyways, guys, thank you for, uh, for the support and thanks for following. If you guys like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Today I'm going to tell you about mine. This fish, 17.2 pounds, uh, 29 and a half inches long, 27 and three quarter inches around. She's massive. This. You know, when you go on a tackle warehouse and you look at swim baits, soft swim baits, there are so many choices. So today I want to give you my top three for someone that's interested in getting and out on the water and throwing some paddle tails. So my number one pick right off the bat would be the uh, hollow body six inch bass.